Good morning, everyone. My name is Ali Ahmad. I am a third year PhD student working at Creatis Laboratory of University of Lyon under the supervision of the Professor David Rousseau and Carol Frendel. Today, I'm happy to share with you part of my work realized during my PhD. So let's start. The topic of my talk today is a comparison between 3D and 2D images for sorting cells from fluorescent markers organization in confocal microscopy. Nowadays, single cell image analysis became a high topic, a topic of high interest in biomedical imaging. Since with the development of the, micro, uh, the microscopy techniques that break the diffraction limit, we are able now to see with high resolution the particles such as in storm microscopy. And also with the development of uh, microfluidic devices, devices that usually coupled with uh, the microscopy techniques or super resolution microscopy techniques, we will be able to do individual inspection by bringing automatically single cells to the microscope. It's true that super resolution microscopy allow us also to do quantitative analysis such as particles, clustering, particles, colocalization, if we have more, two or more uh, channels. But for a problematic of global characterization of a cell such as classification, super resolved microscopy may be not mandatory. This hypothesis was proved with one of our work that was published in Frontiers Journal this year, where we used simulated cells, uh, simulated cells and machine learning to answer the, uh, the question, the following question, which is, do we really need super resolution for cell classification? Here we used, we used two uh, class of cells based on density differences, and we used to change the, uh, the resolution of the image, which, uh, which uh, we modified the size of the Gaussian that we use to mimic the PSF. So when the size of Gaussian is very small, we have super resolved microscopy that, that, that are high, uh, high uh, that have high cost. And when the size of the Gaussian is higher, so we are in sub-resolved regimes, uh, mimicking the, uh, the, sub the conventional microscopy that have lower cost. Now to do this comparison between uh, between uh, super resolved and sub resolved microscopy, we use two kinds of feature spaces. So if we look here, we in super resolved image here, we see like pointy list aspects, but in for sub resolved microscopy, we can see texture, more textural aspects. So we choose uh, feature spaces on feature spaces based on textural and based on pointy list, and we tested the, uh, the classification performance depending on the uh, resolution of the microscopy. So the, the results of simulated data and on real data showed that when using the textural feature spaces, we can have higher classification performance. So super resolution is not mandatory if we optimize the feature spaces for cell classification. Based on this study here, I propose to discuss the value of 2D subresolved confocal microscopy coupled with textural feature space to sort healthy and unhealthy cells by comparison with 3D image volumes. This equation is very important from for several directions because when we are acquiring these 3D volumes, it is much slower than acquiring the 2D imaging because we have to scan all the plans of the cell. And also when we, uh, when we are uh, processing these 3D volumes, it's more expensive in time and, and memory load. So do we really need 2D or 3D image to have best classification performance between cells? So let's see. We propose here the general pipeline of our study. This general pipeline is divided in three main blocks. The first one is to simulate the objects, which is the DNA fluorescent markers, and to model the confocal PSF. The block B is to simulate the 3D image and the 2D image. And finally, the block C is to extract features and to do the classification. Let's talk in details about each one of these blocks. 
Let's start with the first one, the block A, where we have to simulate the objects, which is the chromatin chains and the DNA fluorescent markers. We choose to uh, model the chromatin chains to have more realistic biological parameters. So we used uh, a model of chromatin chain that was published in 2015, which is based on chromosome conformation capture real data and Bayesian inference modeling, and gives a, give us its output at the output, 16 chromatin chains models with 100 different configuration for each one. After that, we can generate on these simulated chromatin chains the DNA particles to have at the end a 3D point cloud where the, that will be used to uh, in the convolution process with the uh, well, with the PSF. This DNA. Uh, particles are simulated in any way where the distance between each two consecutive or two successive points follows a random distribution. Here we selected the uniform distribution and the Gaussian distribution. I will talk later why we have the Gaussian distribution and uniform distribution. So now how we can model the confocal PSF. We used here a sample approximation with the Gaussian where we were uh, in axial direction and, and lateral direction, the sigma r and the sigma z can be modeled in the fo uh, following these equations that are dependent on the numerical aperture of the uh, numerical, numerical aperture of the objective lens and also depend on the laser wavelength and the uh, refractive index of the immersion medium. Usually the laser wavelength is fixed and the immersion media, medium could be fixed also. So we fix two, these two parameters and we take the laser wavelength as uh, 610 nanometer and uh, uh, with oil immersion objective lens of uh, refractive index equal to 1.51. And then we modify the value of the numerical aperture to have several resolutions. So here we can see in the table uh, for smaller value of NA, we can have uh, lower resolution of sigma r and sigma z. This means that we have higher values and for higher value of NA, we can have the, uh, uh, the, the higher resolution. This means that we have lower values of sigma r and sigma z. And here I show the three planes, three orthogonal planes of a simulated PSF for numerical aperture equal one. So like this uh, uh, methodology of modeling, we can simulate for uh, we can simulate several PSFs for each uh, NA value and we can have different resolutions like that the output image they will have different resolutions also so here at the block B the output of the block A will be the uh, 3D volume 3D synthetic volume and to have the 2D uh, 2D image now we take also uh, we take only the slices located at the focal plan of the objective lens. This means the slices at the middle of the XY slices at the middle of the 3D volume as the slices located at the focal plan. And then we try to uh, do the comparison between using the 3D or the 2D. But before that, we have to create the different classes of cell. Based on um, some studies, biological studies, we really realized that distinct diseases uh, like tumor could be characterized by specific chromatin modification and by DNA special redistribution in chromatin domains. So this means that the difference between healthy and unhealthy cells could be based on difference on special organization. For that, we realized two cases based on density differences and distribution differences. For density differences, for example, we generate class one of cells and class two of cells using the uh, uniform distribution uh, of DNA uh, particles for param by and changing the parameter between these two classes. But for other, the other case, we use the distribution distrib uh, differences. And here we use for the class one, the uniform distribution and the class three, for example, we use the Gaussian distribution like that. We have difference, we have the same density, but we have 
different uh, we have different we have, but like that we have different uh, we have different distribution of dna so now once we have all these uh, all these images here so now we can start to extract features so in the, in the literature we have several methods of feature extraction which was the uh, three methods two uh, two of them are the standard used method, the local binary pattern and the gray level coherence matrix. And also we introduced the scattering transform method, which is a deep feature extraction method at different scale. It's a multi-scale ex uh, feature extraction methods. We use these three methods for 2D applied on XY plane and also up for 3D applied on the three orthogonal plane for LBP top and scattering transform methods. And for grave level coherence matrix, we change the number of directions to 13 like that. We can have cover the, the 3D dimensions, not only the 2D planes uh, by comparison with the 2D where we use only four directions. For the other hyperparameters, hyperparameters or parameters of these uh, feature extraction methods, we select for the neighborhood size for LBP and the distance for GLCM, the, <clears throat> the value uh, eight pixel uh, for both of them, which is higher than the maximum, uh, higher than the larger uh, size of PSF. Like that, we can cover if there are two points uh, uh, very close to each other, we can cover the convolution of these two points. And for scattering transform methods, we used Gable wavelet as mother wavelet, and we optimize the parameter of the scattering transform method by uh, selecting the values that give the highest classification performance. Once we have the vectors of features, now we have to reduce them to have the same size for the three methods here. So we apply a principal component analysis on local binary pattern and scattering transform features to reduce the number of features to 12, uh, equally to the number of features of gray level coherence matrix uh, method. So now we have to classify these features, <coughs> uh, these features on healthy and unhealthy. So for that, we, uh, we use the SVM classifier. We optimize the classifier using the classification learner MATLAB application. So we, uh, and we uh, selected the SVM classifier, uh, classifier. And we use tenfold cross validation to quantify the performance of classification. Note that we have for each uh, NA value, we have two classes of cells. And each class of cells, we have 1,000 cells used for training and uh, testing. So let's now <clears throat> interpret interpret the results of the curves that we have here for density differences case and distribution differences case. We can see that the 2D that are the dashed line are very close to 3D for all the NA values in both cases. This repeat that in these density differences we have decrease in the classification performance when we have smaller NA value. So, but for all the, for both cases and for all NA values, we have always 2D and 3D that are very close to each other. We can also see, we can also notice that for scattering transform method, the, this, the value of classification or the classification performance is almost stable for all LA values in both cases here and here. And uh, we can optimize uh, feature extraction methods for each NA value. So for smaller value of NA, we can choose uh, the scattering transform method or for higher values of NA, we can choose LBP or, GL, or GLCM for both cases. So at the end of this uh, analysis of these two curves, we can say that we there are possibility to use the 2D image to have classification between healthy and unhealthy cells based on density and distribution differences. So as a conclusion of all this talk now, where we did a comparison of performance between classification of cells on 3D and two images here, and we used numerical simulation mimi uh, by uh, mimicking the confocal microscopy with this uh, with a uh, sample psf model and we modified the resolution of the microscope to have to have several resolution of the image by changing the a value so we can say that 
In the end, we can choose the 2D image located on the focal plane of a microscope and, uh, and use them to classify cells instead of using all the 3D volume that is, uh, that is expensive in uh, image acquisition time and uh, in expensive in uh, memory load and uh, uh, data processing time. Finally, we can also say that this proposed methodology could be translated to any other type of microscopy. Here we use the sample 3D confocal model. We can use more realistic model of PSF or we can use it, uh, experimental PSF. We can try, we can uh, realize the same study on more realistic PSF and also we can use this kind of uh, this metho methodology by coupling the simulation and machine learning to do the virtual instrumentation and to study the quality of a given PSF for a given informational task. In the end, I, do, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, I am ready to answer your questions. Thank you.